You're watching the Letterman Podcast with Mike Chisholm, endorsed by the Hello Deli. Yeah! <laughs> Welcome once again to the Letterman Podcast. My name is Mike Chisholm. I am delighted to be here and talk about all things David Letterman and company. Uh, at the time of this recording, we are in May of 2023. Um, and it's going to coincide, uh, the release of this is going to coincide around the time uh, that we mark the anniversary of Dave's last show on Late Show with David Letterman, um, the end of the 33-year run. Well, what many thought was the end of the 33-year run, uh, thank goodness that was not the case, and Dave is still out there doing all sorts of great, great things. We appreciate him so much, all the places that he pops up, um, and uh, we wish it would be more. I mean, my gosh, the May 20th of 2015 garnered, um, it, was a, it, was, it, was, it was the end of an era. And it was an era that I think that a lot of us to this day, there's a sentiment that I've been hearing a lot over this last year, year and a month that we've uh, been doing this show. And that a lot of people out there really took for granted the fact that we had Dave every single night. Uh, and it wasn't just Dave, of course, it was Dave and company, the production that they they created every single night, creating um, comedy that years later is showing up on the official Letterman YouTube channel, sometimes for the first time, and and still knocking people over. And, and uh, it was a different time. There's no question that at the end of 2015, uh, broadcasting, uh, comedy, um, you know, change the culture changed at the end of 2015, and 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 new eras uh, came into play. It was interesting that Dave never had a show, uh, a nightly show, I should say, when when uh, you know Trump took over. And this isn't a polarization thing at all. It's just a thing. Just like Johnny Carson really never made a ton of jokes about Bill Clinton back in the day. It just it it missed them, and and it's interesting that the moment that Dave retired, a new era uh, kind of began after that. And um, combine that with just how we're feeling about just nostalgia in general. There's a lot of throwback stuff that's come into into vogue uh, these days. People are, are are liking you know classic logos of their uh, product that they love or throwbacks to songs. A lot of the new pop songs have samples of old songs that were really big back in the day. And I think there's a hunger for throwback. I think there's nostalgia that's there. And I think right now uh, there's in in many ways there's never been a better time to be uh, a, a David Letterman enthusiast. And those of us who were there years ago uh, want to, many of us just want to, uh, you know, continue to relive that thing. As our guest today said to me, uh, I look forward to geeking out with you. I totally feel comfortable and excited about that idea. By the way, today we are going to have our third Canadian, third Canadian on the show. Um, the Letterman podcast has had three types. We have three types of guests on this show. We have people who obviously worked for Dave and company, people who were on the show or affected by the show. And the third type of person that we have on the show here are the members of the, the, the Letterman enthusiast community, people who uh, just love um, Dave and company and, and, and the productions and, and, and immerse themselves in it and uh, just go that extra mile as an enthusiast and have a story to tell and want to get their story out there. And then we can get together and geek out about this stuff. I think our culture these days uh, has a significant uh, amount of that. You know, Walking Dead was great, but so was Talking Dead that happened right after. Better Call Saul was awesome. So was Talking Saul, you know, where we get together and talk about these things together. Uh, this show certainly wants to encapsulate some of that spirit. So our guest today is a guy that I have been communicating with actually since the very beginning of this show. Uh, another enthusiast, another uh, guy from Western Canada. Actually, he and I only live like three and a half hours apart from each other. He lives in Vancouver, British Columbia. I live in Kelowna, British Columbia. We have been talking about doing this for a while. We're waiting for the right timing and the timing is now and you're going to see why in this episode. By the way, Rob Stover here could tell me, uh, we could have probably five or six uh, episodes based on his uh, Letterman experience and the times that he has been to the show. This is another guy that's been there multiple, multiple times. We're going to uh, go through that list at the end of this uh, this this show, the, the, the things that he has seen. We're going to show a picture of all of the different shows he's been at, but um, he was at the last show and immersed himself in the, 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 the feeling that was that last show. And there was a lot of magic that week um, in May of 20. 
15 in New York. Rob Stover, thank you so much for taking time to be part of the Letterman podcast today. Thank you for all the encouragement that you've given me right from the very beginning. And uh, you've been cheering the show on right from the start. So thank you very, very much for being a part of this today, Rob. My pleasure, Mike. Thanks. It's exciting to have you here, man. This is great. <laughs> yes. a, a long time in the making. Yeah, for sure. Like you say, I get nostalgic around this time of year. Every May 20th, put it on the thing, watch it, have a tasty beverage, and just bring back those memories. I do the same thing. Before we before we do that, uh, show us all the t-shirt you got on. Yeah, so I meant to, to wear the, um, I bought a late, the first time I went to New York was 97. Yep. And uh, that's not when Hello Deli was selling it. I went to Rock America right. to go see Mujibur and Sirigil. Mujibur was there. Not so thrilled at getting his picture taken. He probably wasn't as uh, hot to trot with that. But uh, so, yeah, I couldn't find it uh, to do this. But back in 95, and this is one of those great Canadian connections, yeah. uh, Dave, as he was wont to do, would make a celebrity out of a complete unknown. In this case, uh, a disc or a, a gas jockey in Regina, Saskatchewan. Yep. Not where, not where we are. Um, by the name of Dick Assman. Yeah. Which... Uh, yeah, not so what, unusual name, sure. So yeah, of course, Dave played on Dick Ass Man. Dick Ass Mania was a thing for a few weeks. And I happened to be working across Western Canada that time. And, and I was going from Alberta to Saskatchewan. So the opportunity to go visit him was there. So went to the Petro Canada. I was my Dick Ass Mania shirt, Tour 95. <laughs> very, very cool. I had, like, this, is in the, this is in the vault for a long time. I hadn't, hadn't taken this out. So proud the to show up for that. The audio listeners, you're going to be missing out a little bit today. You might want to consume the show on the YouTubes because uh, we're going to show some of Rob's photos. He just stood up, showed his shirt, Dick Ass Mania on it. Uh, one side on the left, a picture of Dave on the phone, a picture on the right of of, of the legend that is Dick Ass Man, uh, owner of the Petro Can in Regina. <laughs> that, uh, by the way, and there are people who have contacted me uh, since this show has started, people who still live there, or there's a lot of folks in Saskatchewan that have a Dick Ass Man story, um, right. and 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 it's funny the uh, the local infamy that was created for Dick around uh, Letterman and 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 the show is just awesome. I do have. Um, uh, I, I do have it on good authority that the Dick Assman saga is going to be released on the uh, Letterman YouTube channel. That's going to be happening. So that, that, that's good news. Uh, there was a lot of fun with that. And that was the fun, like when Dave would do that, um, I, it was just such a cool thing when he would pull somebody uh, out of nowhere and, 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 and they would become sort of infamous in their area. I love that about Dave. You, you watch Dave ever since you were a kid. I think we're both Gen X kids, right? I'm a 76. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. 73. 73. Okay. And, uh, and, and, and did you always have that, uh, you know, kind of that, that, that cult like fandom for Dave, the way that uh, a lot of us have, or did you come into it later? You know, I love it because there's such a commonality between almost everybody has that same story, whether it's the TV was left on after Carson and then who was this whack, wacko guy right after who's just wow. Um, so, again, you know, we're the age that late night didn't, you know, wasn't there from the beginning. Certainly didn't even know about the morning show until much later because yeah. you know, being at school and everything. Yep. So, yeah, late show was was I would say was was the one that, you know, seeing it from the beginning in 93 um, to its mm -hmm. conclusion, that's where you felt felt more ownership of it. Um, I mean, obviously, the zaniness of, of late night was was something else. And you can't uh, you can't, you know, get away from that. But uh, yeah, late show, that was kind of like when I moved to CBS is OK, start to finish. I'm, I'm, I'm on board from this. And uh, yeah, that was just fantastic. I, uh, I I appreciate the sentiment of where you're coming from because I, again, um, in 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 being sort of a of a lightning rod for all of these different opinions uh, that that are coming in, it's so it's so um, interesting to see how many how wide the variety of people's opinion on this thing are. That is the body, of, and that's why we call it the body of broadcasting work. You know, when you think about a body and how, how, how big it is and how diverse it is and how the different parts are, 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 are so unique. So too is this body of work that's continuing to this day. Are you still watching uh, the stuff that Dave puts out there? Yeah. I mean, who would have thought though? It's funny because, you know, watch when we decided to do this thing, it was like, I watched the show again and it hadn't even clicked me that whole day in the life that they put together day in the life. There's one line he says, 
I think I'm going to devote my life to social media or something. And I was like, whoa, he actually, he actually did. Like he's on, he's on the YouTube, he's doing the thing, you know, not tweeting as much as we'd all love or something, but, uh, but fantastic that, you know, Barbara Gaines is so kind enough to invite him on her show. You Isn't know, that nice so of her? Fun. That it's so it great, nice Barbara. Of <laughs> Dude, yeah, the Barbara Gaines show. Uh, go check it out on the official Letterman YouTube channel. Uh, I t- I couldn't agree more. By the way, um, my favorite part of that and 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 that day in the life. I mean, Walter J and everyone who was involved in that fantastic job. That oh, was nice. really good, uh, really powerful uh, piece. That 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 live. It still lives in my heart. Um, my favorite part, you know, obviously they knew cameras were there and things were a little bit different or whatever, but just you, the razor sharp wit that Dave has, uh, you know, Dave was asking Barbara, I think about, about, about her kid <laughs> and she said, well, how's Harry? Oh, good. You know, quit his job. Yeah. Or quit school, going to work at a Dairy Queen. I, right. I just, I love that line so much. Yeah. Like, um, so many little, little gold moments in that, uh, in that little doc and, and, and just to hear, you know, to know that Walter is still, um, you know, working on the YouTube channel and all that stuff now, you know, Jay works for, uh, uh, for Seth now, which is, all right. which is interesting as well. Um, yeah, I, I'm so grateful that he's still putting stuff out and, and, uh, the benefit of hindsight, you know, really in nostalgia and all of these things, you watch the final show again. Um, you were at the final show. I want to talk about that. You have been a part of all sorts of stuff. You were at Dave's, was it his last show before nine 11? No, I, um, yeah, we could talk about that a little bit later. No, I, I yeah. went back to New York and I was there on the one year anniversary that's what uh, it was. Okay. Gosh, boy, if I had been in that one, that was what a what a show his one coming back was. But but that was still quite special coming back the year anniversary on 9-11-2002. There you go. And 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 just beforehand, uh before everything changed, you were in New York too. Like that's some crazy, crazy stuff that you've seen. Uh, you know, traveling across the country, literally across the continent. Like for us to go to to see Letterman, it was a it's a big it was a big it's deal. A <laughs> <laughs> yeah right i'm driving from philadelphia for a couple hours to new york no yeah yeah for you exactly. from Kelowna, that's at least an extra connection, i'm sure <laughs> yeah that's right that's right um so i do want to zero in on on the fact that you were there for the last show and how much of it you did take in uh we'll get to the pictures and stuff later again youtube uh, or you know for the for the audio listeners probably want to consume it on the youtube we we'll get some pictures that we're going to show but um i want to you know you did visit the show multiple times uh, during multiple phases of late show and, um, you know, going back there the last time, how was getting tickets and when did you know that you were going to the last show? Yeah. So, this, I mean, this is great. The beauty of the internet, I was able to go back into old emails and I didn't realize how truncated some of the timeline was, but like, like you, like everyone else, those last few weeks were just spectacular. And that's when you're sinking in going, Oh my, he's actually, this isn't a joke. Like Dave is, Dave is leaving. Yeah. And I remember, I mean, I mean, the, the classic episodes were Norm Macdonald, obviously. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just buckets. Uh, Ray Romano. I mean, yeah. and I watched those and I'm like, you know, not like obviously affected these individuals in their career and everything, but just how much Dave has, has shaped sensibilities of mine in terms of comedy and appreciation of certain things. And and I have just a huge love for New York. And that's always been part and parcel of my New York experience. So, I mean, I, I could talk about that with, with other things forever. So, I mean, maybe like three weeks prior, you know, I'm sitting on my computer. I just watched whatever show last night. And I'm like, oh, there's no way, there's no way tickets are still, they're probably giving away to VIPs and friends of the show and this and this. So yeah. I go on the CBS website and I, you know, as you do, back in the end the day before uh, other ticket brokers came along that's a whole other story about getting tickets now yeah but cbs still had it. they were showing three days monday tuesday wednesday wednesday being the last show I'm like all right i'll i'll apply for these so first i think they did an order of preference so obviously i went with wednesday then tuesday then monday yeah knowing that there's no way i would even be in new york for all those three days um so that was maybe three weeks before. Didn't hear anything. And now we're literally May 13th. Because I, again, looked at my inter- internet email. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I haven't heard anything. But I'm just, I want to be there just to feel the vibe. Even just to walk by the Ed Sullivan Theater one more time. 
And the cool thing there is my wedding anniversary is three days prior. So this is a perfect thing. I can tell my wife, say, hey, why don't we do a nice trip to New York? Just a short, you know, couple days. You know, I've, I've applied for, for Letterman tickets. I haven't heard anything, but, you know, and, and it was, a, again, you know, the, the air schedule. It was a wonky schedule. We ended up just buying the tickets, hadn't heard anything. Leaving on a Monday, a you know, red-eye flight to Newark, got there at 2 yep. a.m. on Tuesday. So could, yep. could see Tuesday's show if we saw Tuesday. And then one night in a hotel Wednesday, flew back Thursday. We didn't even have a hotel Wednesday night. We were just going to fly back Thursday morning. So literally Monday to Thursday, we booked that time. One night a hotel. Uh, thank goodness our, our, we have older daughters who were, uh, were able to watch our younger boys. We're so grateful that, that they were able to do that. Um, but again, so, okay, maybe it's just a cool trip to New York, tied in with our anniversary. Great. So, so you, must okay, I want to reiterate. Yeah. I want to reiterate. You're taking a trip across the continent for a couple <laughs> of days, just for a couple of days, not knowing if you're going to go down. But in your mind, like, okay, so when I do that with my wife, hey, yeah, yeah maybe this will happen, maybe this won't happen. She immediately rolls her eyes and goes, okay. Like in my case, she'd be like, okay, we're going to spend – whether or not we get tickets, we're going to be spending every moment down at the Ed Sullivan Theater, aren't we? Like, that's what my wife would immediately <laughs> shoot. Is that, is that kind of the case with you as well? It's like, okay, well, even if we don't get tickets, I'm going to go down. I'm going to be part of it because that magic was already happening. It was already brewing. You know, oh, yeah. these big Just moments had already TV. happened by that point. So, yeah, you, know. you knew something was going to happen because yeah. stuff, stuff was happening. Yeah. So. And this is again, and I love hearing your I mean, your stories is just bonkers and and you know, and we can talk about that, but <laughs> hearing about other people just I don't care if you went to the show once or went ten times or a hundred times. I just love hearing that first, you know, or how you got tickets or the whole set. Like those are just great stories. So I agree. This, I, I that's why we do the show. that's why community is part of that. I love that too. It's so fun. I'm excited for you right now. And this is something that happened eight years ago. And I'm excited uh -huh. for you right now, knowing that an email is going to come or I, I want to know the rest of the, okay, how did this happen? Right. So I'm, I'm uh, heading into Vancouver. I live in a city called New Westminster, heading into Vancouver on our sky train. That's our, our transit. And again, maybe it's now the Thursday, Friday before the week we're going and my phone rings, cell phone rings and it's a two, one, two number. So I'm like, yep. I know it. that feeling. Yep. <laughs> Pick it up. Hello. Hi, is this Rob? Yeah, this is Aaron from Late Show with David Letterman. I'm like, hi, Aaron. How's it going? Good, good. <laughs> so you've applied for tickets. I'm like, yeah, that was chill. I, I you know, asked him to put him on hold for a second. No, so I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm great. Um, he's like, so you applied for tickets. Are, are you sure you're going to be in New York? He's yeah, you know what? Uh, we're going to be there Tuesday and, and Wednesday, hoping he's not going to say you tickets for Monday show because that would have crushed, been crushing. He said, well, you know, you got to answer a question. Of course, it's always a softball question, which 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 cracked me up. You know, what is the color of the announcer's hair or, or where is Paul from? Yeah. So answer that in the millisecond. And he said, well, congratulations. You got tickets for Tuesday's show. I went, wow. I, I, Aaron, thank you so much. I This just this just means the world to me. And in the back of my head, I'm like, it's Tuesday's show. Yeah. The penultimate. So, the penultimate, which is fantastic, and it was sure. Bill Murray and like and everything, absolutely. But I'm like, he's like, so you know, you got to go pick up your ticket and or come here, and uh, you're on Aaron's gold list or whatever, and, and yep. come to the lobby. I'm like, well, that's great. Um, can I ask, is is it possible? Because I'm going to be there Wednesday. Oh, is it possible to get tickets for Wednesday Wednesday show? Good for the you. Final show. So yeah, he goes well, and you get to tell hesitation. You got to be like a super fan. So okay. What do you know about the Christmas show? So right away, I'm like, holy cow! Love. Yeah, it was it was like darling love. Jay Thomas throwing the football at the thing, and and, and Paul and Cher and her muff, and he's like, oh yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know? He's like, all right, okay, boy. Okay. you got nice job. Yeah, get on your feet. You know, just throwing. Oh yeah, it just all there. came like a wave. And he goes, you got the tickets for Wednesday show. So. I'm not at home. I'm not in, you know, I'm in a public confined sky train. I wanted to just, just scream out, yeah. you know, just, a, just, just absolutely, you know, called my wife right away. I said, yeah, I'm going to the last show. So, I mean, that was just, I still can, that's a memory recall I can tap into. Um, Cause it's like, wow, this is happening. I mean, you knew it was going to be something just because of all the lead up. Like, yeah. like uh, you've talked about plenty of times with, with your guests or, and everything. So, yeah, so that was it. Uh, so we headed to New York and um, 
you know, I'll skip through all the, the, the pre stuff coming to Wednesday. So get up Wednesday morning route. I think some in a hotel in Queens, we booked something on points. Cause yeah, it was such, we didn't have the money to get something in Manhattan. Yep. You know, I remember going to, uh, there was like a gas station so we, and it was a nice warm day. It was a beautiful day in, in May in New York. Mm-hmm. And, uh, went to the gas station, bought like two Gatorades for like five bucks. Like, Oh, great deal. So we'll get that. You don't bring anything else because we knew from past, you know, you don't want to bring any bags or anything, anything that's going to you know, impede getting into the theater. So we so we get there and, they, you know, they say, come at this time. Like, oh, we should go an hour early. And, and even my wife, Christine, she's like, no, let's go even a bit earlier. And sure enough, there's a huge lineup. And not only that, it was the media presence. Absolutely. Like that's yeah, that was like. This is something I mean, not that I need to be told that, but it's like, you know, this is enough that. You know, you had, there were TV trucks out on Broadway, just, you know, and, and traffic was kind of uh, being diverted around that stretch. So, you know, the drill, you, you get in the lineup and, you know, there's just a buzz in the crowd. Everybody's talking, you know. Um, and again, you know, then people were coming to the line with cameras. So uh, I got interviewed by NBC Nightly News. Uh, they're asking me about, you know, my, you know, favorite Dave shows. I, I think I talked about the 9-11 episode yeah. obviously which is such a, a landmark event and yeah. uh and my wife gets interviewed by swedish swedish news it's like well, you know, really dave's huge with the swedes um so okay sure so that was it you know and, and you'd see people talking and then the best part so we haven't gone in yet we haven't checked in yet yeah. but we see this individual running around and he's he's got like a microphone and stuff and you're like and, you know, he turns around, he's kind of, a, I think he was across Broadway. Then he came, he came into our, the group there and it's Jay Thomas. What the which, heck? Yeah, exactly. In your so, wildest like, dreams, Rob. When you, like, I know, like when you yeah. See him turn, what, like, what yeah. are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, so I guess, I guess he had, he had like a serious XM yeah. radio show or something. I never had that. So I, I had no idea. And it's fantastic. He's going around, he's running up, you know. He comes up to he comes up to me and my wife. And it's it's weird because at that moment my mind goes to not to Dave's show, but it goes to Cheers, my f- favorite sitcom Eddie of all time. Eddie Lebec, Canadian uh, goaltender. Yep. So you know, it it took me everything to say, hey Eddie Lebec, you know. Um, though I wish I'd asked if he was herbed up because that would have just that would have <laughs> warmed my heart, but uh, missed opportunity in many ways. But then he goes and interviews my wife, which is hysterical because, you know, of the two of us, I don't know if it's with you and your wife. She's probably like, OK, Mike, I'll, yeah, you'll geek out with this. I'm I'm OK with it. So he's asking her all these questions about what does Dave mean to you and everything? And she's like, ah, he's an icon. He's this. <laughs> but I'm content to take a picture and like capture this moment and everything, um, <laughs> which, you know, I digress for a second. We're talking about Jay Thomas. So I don't lose Please. train of thought. When, whenever you watched. And I'm sure you watched multiple of the times the Christmas show yes. and the Lone Ranger tale. Yep. What are you yep. doing? What are you doing, Mike, as you watch that? Like, are you watching Jay tell his story or what? Uh... I, 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 I love the look of sort of satisfaction or glee that Dave has yep. as Jay is telling that story. Like you can tell this is one of those stories uh, that 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 just brings genuine delight to Dave, no matter how many times he hears it. And I take pleasure in that whenever I see that. So, is that is that hundred percent okay? Hundred percent because we all know the story. We know where it's going. Jay the greatest talk show sometimes story in history. Record. Sometimes it's something. Yeah, exactly. But it's it's Dave because I mean, I think it's that how every comedian, everyone was always trying to get that reaction or something out of Dave, and we all kind of look to him which uh, it sounds like the, you know, the staff wrote to him or certainly the comedy writers and everything. So yeah, I just, I always, I love that seeing what made Dave laugh. And then you're thinking you're in that same group of, okay, I think that's funny too. Or, you know, you're yeah. laughing. You're the only person laughing in a theater at sometimes at certain jokes, which nobody else is getting. And I'm like, I'm totally cool with that. So I'm that guy but, so um, many times, Rob, it's not even funny. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Cause I digress <laughs> to your family. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Oh yeah, and then you had yeah, so I've got this again, not for the YouTube people. So yeah, Jay's like handing out these things. Uh, what? Sign. Yeah, he was. It was like sitting there. He's got the microphone, just with, like rolled up things. So that's a picture of him throwing the football. At the oh, Rob, that is so cool. So yeah, so that was cool. Yeah. Wow. 
I yeah, don't know that we've I'm ever. I don't know that that's ever come out uh, on any. I, I've never. I've never heard that before. I I saw the pictures and I knew yeah. that was coming. I didn't know he was handing out stuff there. And <laughs> it, is, it was hysterical. It's kind of like that's you know, amazing you go, participation award or something. <laughs> but um, so yeah, so it's it's great. So that you know, then we go in. So then it's time to go into the lobby now. So. Yeah. Um, and that's again, that's that's its own excitement because you're in not only Dave's house but Ed Sullivan, or you know, yeah, people are waiting to go see the Beatles and Elvis and all that and everything. You know, they got the signs up, no photos. So of course you take out your phone and you can take a quick picture. Oh, um, I know. When you sent me your photos, I was like, Oh, super I mean, blurry what are they too. gonna yeah, do? Sorry. It's the last show, right? But I was like, Oh man, like the fear that I would have had for you just trying to get that camera out and start taking these yeah. pictures where you're not supposed to. That's like Crazy. No, hundred percent. Yeah, no, you, you're exactly right. That's why it's a crappy photo because I'm like, I'm not getting busted for this. You know, exactly. Not worth it. Not I've probably tonight. taken that photo a few times before at other shows where I was less. You know, the stakes weren't as high or anything. So, um, so we go in, you check in, and as I'd learned from before, you you, you act excited. You don't go nutsoid, but you just show that, and they might put a little sticker on your ticket. Or something, or a lowered numbered sticker, because then you're supposed to come back, you know, and line up in the in the order. So, uh, so we felt pretty good. We went, we went there. We left. Um, we didn't go around the side. I, I regret doing that. We didn't go around the side to the, the stage door to see who was coming in, because when we all everybody lined up again, yeah, I made sure to take a picture of my ticket, because that was always a thing you, you a rookie mistake before. If you don't take a picture, then they take it. You have no record of it. That's right. Uh, finish the gate, finish the Gatorade bottles again, you know, like, cause it was a hot day and everything. So time comes, you know, time comes to come back. Everybody's lining up. You're hearing whispers in the, in the crowd as we're all lined. Like oh, I saw Jim Carrey at the stage door. I saw this and this. So, cause of course nobody knew what was supposed to happen. Yeah. And, and the big, you know, the big rumor was it might be Leno, you know, yep. which, yep. You know, we never saw it. It totally makes sense that it wasn't because it would have just been a different focus. And and um, I mean, gosh, you hope that he does a Netflix thing with Lana or something down the line, if or something right. happens with the two of them. Because uh, you know, the, those are those are always magic moments on late night. Jay yeah. Leno was probably the best best guest of Leno's anyway, or of the Letterman's. I agree. Uh, it's interesting the idea. It, it, it's funny in starting this show. Just a little quick aside. It's funny to see the camps. Uh, both within folks who worked for Dave, um, you know, and 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 enthusiasts as well. Um, I almost want to say it's 50-50. There's a group of people who just want to see resolution and 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 it be real. And then there's another group who are like, screw that guy and screw, <laughs> we don't want any of that. It, it, it's fascinating to me to see. I was actually uh I wasn't quite as prepared as I could have been for that reaction and how. Uh, that is the case. My my, so I was there one month earlier, and in the Q and A, I asked Dave about Jay, and 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 he brought Nancy out. Well, you know, and we, they he even said like it made CNN the next day. It was like Letterman said that they have uh, extended an invite to Jay, and and I wow. I'm glad I'm certainly glad he wasn't on the last show. It would have been it, it would have been fascinating to see him within the last week as yeah. part of that magic and whatnot, but the last show, no, I mean, I, I, I think, I think you're right. Um, the celebration, the way they did it. I mean, if he would have been part of that star studded top 10, that would have been, you know, a, an iconic moment, like the, like the, uh, like the Tocitos commercial. Um, but, uh, yes. uh, you know, I think probably with the history, with the uh, benefit of hindsight, I'm glad that he wasn't there. hundred percent. Yeah. 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 But because there were in the, in the crowd the though. There were rumors though, right? There were rumors. Oh, that he for was sure. Coming. Yeah, and, and you know, and then people were saying, "Well, who was coming in?" And again, I wasn't there, which was great. Which made the the revealing of the top ten last even more uh, top ten uh, crowd uh, group even more even more exciting. So, yep. um, so anyways, yeah. So we go back in the lobby. So I mentioned those Gatorades, right? So I've been drinking Gatorades. So I apparently <laughs> hadn't uh, <laughs> hadn't done a good job of uh, of of being prepared for the show we're in we're in the lobby we're in the whole snake kind of you know uh stanchions and everything you're, you're there they yep. tell you right off okay you know we're gonna be here for a while and then we're gonna go into the theater and again knowing from having been there a few times before you know the show doesn't start right away you see the band come on and a few songs and everything yep but i i i gotta go i <laughs> i you know 
I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there thinking, I, I got to go to the bathroom. And they had already said, you can't do the bathroom. And I, I take it probably security or something. Cause I'd never, I'd never been to the, I think I've heard of people, maybe older folks that they had to go, they had to go, but yeah. So I'm standing there. I'm like, okay. And I look at my wife, she's like, what's wrong? I said, I really, I really have to go, but they might let us in. And it's like, am I going to go to the bathroom? They let you in and that's it. And I, yeah, I can, <laughs> I'm sure you'd have had the same, you know, this I get is my, I, heartbroken. I'd be like a dog in the rain looking outside. <laughs> I'd have dreams of like my wife being asked up on stage with Dave, yeah. you know, and I'd be like, oh, guess what happened? You weren't there. So anyway, so I, uh, I'm like, I, I, I got to do something. So I crawl under like the lines. People are like, what is this Yahoo doing? And there's, I guess there was an intern or something. That I said, excuse me, I'm so sorry. I really, I've got to go to the bathroom. We can't, you can't go in here. Just, you know, go, go to the, go to the lobby, go to the front and talk to, talk to him and see. So I don't know if you recall, there are always those, those, like those older guys in the, in the, in the suits, like the dark suits, they kind of like, like, like Sinatra's goons or something like kind of that old yeah. New York stuff, you know, Mike and Vinny are there. two of them and chief and yeah. oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Vinny and exactly. So I yeah, go, up, go up to one guy and right, right away, he's like, what's this guy doing? Like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Sir, I'm so sorry. I, I have to, I have to, I have to go to the bathroom so badly. I, I, I you know, is there, what, you know, what can I do? And he, so he kind of points towards the doors and there's another one of his guys standing there. He's like, okay, okay. Go to the three monkeys. And I'm like, uh, that's your buddy. Like, and like thinking that's his nickname or something, the three monkeys. And he, and he kind of chuckles like, no, 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 no. All right. You know, Tiger, hold on. Okay. <laughs> he's like, no, no. <laughs> go out onto Broadway, go up to 54th, turn left, go down a few. There's a restaurant there that has a washroom. I said, okay, thank you. So, and you're going to let me in, right? You, you, you're going to, you know, because that's my worry, you know? So he goes, okay, opens the door and there's all these people there because there's still oh media God. looking. Who's this? Who's this wacko coming out at this time? I ran up the block. I turned left. I've never ran so hard in my life. I can only imagine. See the, see the three monkeys run right into the washroom, do my thing. Full disclosure, I may not have washed my hands. And I, <laughs> I completely caught to that run right back right back and thank goodness the guy i saw him like yeah, it doesn't mean you know and they hadn't let the crowd in but I, you know honestly that was just the biggest i could think <laughs> the worst nightmare i'd have never lived down my whole life so um get in christine's there we we get in soon after we're led into the theater and that's always fun as it kind of jockey people into what position they're at and everything um Dave, you know, or paul comes on with with the band which is always great and then hearing their music which is that's again the thing of being in a show, the thing that as a fan, yep, and and then you, Mike, you had that moment because you because you had a call, you had a moment in the show which we as an audience at home had no idea. Right, those are those moments we live for. It's absolutely it sh shoot to some random person in the audience. Everybody would laugh, and we're at home going, "Man, I wish I was in that party. I wish I yep. was part of the cool kids." So <laughs> immortality. You know, I'm an immortal now. Oh, it's it's the sweetest thing, man. I love yep. it. Yeah um so yeah we get in it's this yeah by that time yeah eddie brill was no longer the warm-up guy so it was the was the alan. alec baldwin yeah yeah what's that it was alan was warming warming up the crowd at that point wasn't he did he warm up for you guys that night no they had a video i think the last two times i went it was a video that alec baldwin they had used him as like a host on how to laugh or how not to laugh don't do the wolf whistles and all that um <laughs> eddie's was always great because he did that weird roar noise like don't do that roar you know um <laughs> which was always cracking me up um you gotta get yeah, him to so do that, that the next time he comes on the show thank you for that he hasn't done that on our yeah, show yeah. yet the next time he comes on we get him to do that <laughs> <laughs> yes that's right um and so this is the thing. In hindsight, I don't recall when Dave's wife and, and son and, and 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 his and his friend came in. Tommy Roboto, yes. Tommy Roboto. I, <laughs> I have to think that um, he, you know, I think there were probably seat fillers for a little bit, but then when you see the video which the Letterman Channel released a year ago, which I was so gr grateful to see the the, the clips of Dave because that was they all that's been in my memory banks of, of that moment. And I see, I see his wife in the audience. So she obviously, they obviously got in at lot in at that time to see, yep. you know, daddy up on stage and everything doing before the show went. So, yeah. So Dave comes out. Um, 
And yeah, and, and if you've seen that video, like there was some, there's some, you know, goofy questions. The woman asking about turtles, like did Dave used to run turtle races and everything. <laughs> so the video that the Letterman channel put up, put a lot of that in, but a couple things they missed. So here's the little, what else happened? Um, I loved, yeah, the question that the, the woman asked about leaning against the pole, what do you do? I think that was a good, you know, what, what were you saying? He's like, none of your business, right? Got a yep. huge laugh. Yep. Um, a moment that's not in that video, which completely <laughs> understand is somebody said, Dave, who do you think is going to win tonight's game between the New York Rangers and the Tampa Bay Lightning? And, you know, Dave, Dave just takes that second, like, you know, you've been out here all this time, you know, this is, this is what you came up with. This is your your question and then he went into a whole routine about um how hockey should ice hockey should only be played on on con in countries that have naturally occurring ice like you know a little, a little oh. yeah um so that um that's my phone going give me two seconds no no, no that's okay i i love i love the hockey stuff uh when it comes to dave eddie when eddie came on the show he talked about he and i've talked about that outside of so you and i you know uh, hockey is a religion up here it, it, it yeah. flat out is and when i found out uh that they're all actually big hockey fans there um one of my very favorite moments ever on Letterman was him at the desk lamenting about the team Canada, 2010 uh, Olympic gold medal. Oh, win, like, where, where, oh, yeah, where, in Vancouver, where he was yeah. saying, oh, you know what? And we got through the, it was, got into the game and it got into overtime. And I just, I wanted the Canadians to win. And when he said that, I was like, <laughs> Oh, cause it was such a huge moment for us. Right. It yeah. was, you know, Canada, us and the gold medal. But anyway, so, so you got to hear him talk about hockey. Yeah, yeah, just and again, just at the total because this person just asked a crap question, which was which was awesome in itself. So, um, and then I, you know, I had my I had my question ready, which I had like every time, never got picked. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny because Scott Ryan's book ended up answering the question that I had. Oh yeah, I think I got mine here somewhere. We <laughs> yeah, always exactly. give love to Scott Ryan in this book. Great, this great, great, absolute book. fantastic read. I've got it on Kindle. I've got it, uh, you know, hard copy of it. Um, yeah, he did, did a masterful so, job. So, so the, the question that you were going to ask got answered in that book. Yes, was why was number six in the top 10 list always the funniest? Because that was my, I always thought that was the case. And I loved how he broke it down. I think number two was what they said should have been the top, but number six, because that's when the screen shifted over. So it kind of stayed on a bit longer. But yeah, I always thought number six, better for better part, was the best of all. And then number one was just the shortest. So Paul could jump in with the music and everything so it was okay, always so a short of your, answer of your what was it half a dozen to 10 appearance uh, times you went to the show something like that right N nine times nine times okay yeah. of the nine times that you went there how many times did you have that question waiting to be asked <laughs> was that like was that one that you had for years or was that one that you just had prep for that show no that was every time i think i was oh, like that, i was one of those guys who just uh, hands up yeah. never got picked so yeah. um <laughs> So it was it was great that I somehow got that answered through another uh, through another format years later. So, um, so yeah. So Dave, I think that was about it. Yeah. Then the lady, and then um, again that 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 Letterman Channel thing cuts to him saying, "Okay, folks, now it's a cold open. We don't want you to make any noise because that was the president's all saying uh, our national day of night or national nightmare is over." Um, but be be between that time, he brought on a guest himself. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring somebody on. And he brings on Les Moonves. So um, the CBS wow. president. Yeah. So he was in the house and 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 it was cool, you know, for him to because to, he kind of alluded to what he then said later in the show about how, yeah. you know, he kind of had a, a, show, a long leash with with uh, Les Moonves and letting him do what he did and all that. Talking about his patience, um, and very, very, very patience, patience underlined many times. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, understandably, Bless Lumez is not in that retrospect because because he's some things happened between 2015 sure. and now. Sure. Yeah. So, but that's another thing that was kind of cool to see. He's like, wow, here's the head of the head of the studio there to see, you know, the the man retire. So he was probably sitting there going, "This show's going long." You know, <laughs> yeah. tell the affiliates we're going long or something. Yeah. So, it was like 75 minutes or 80 minutes or whatever it was at the end of the day. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, if you want, I could just go through the show because it's kind of thing. Yeah. Like, so, okay. So that was between the cold open and Paul. And no, the before the cold open. So he, it was he before the cold open. Question. 
I think okay. the lady who asked about leaning against the pole and he said, okay, well, that's, an, you know, I just want to do one more thing, brings in, in moon vest, then says, okay, folks, we're going to start the show and yeah, cold open, don't say anything. And then, yeah, then, then, you know, the whole thing goes, the presence and stuff. He comes on, of course, you know, that was just the standing ovation that lasted forever. And, uh, you know, it, it was just being in that however many hundred seat theater and just all the emotions were there and everybody would have stood forever and stuff. And Dave's doing his whole opening the jacket. Paul's got the music going as he always, as he always does and stuff. So, um, yeah, I, uh, you know, it goes right to the Tonight Show joke, which is, it's isn't that right something? Yep. Yeah. You Fantastic know. opening. Like there is no perfect, that was, it was a perfect show. Like it was a perfect yeah. show, period. It just was. But you talk about a perfect moment of a perfect show. There is no better opening joke than that joke. It was yeah. so, per it's just perfect. It just ties it right from the beginning to the end. Yeah. And just, and we know we're in for that kind of night, you know, and stuff. So, um, <laughs> And then, of course, and the thing that only like, like total geeks would know is, you know, he, he did he did all the jokes and stuff. And again, as you watch it years later, it's a joke about Stephen Hawking. He's passed on or keeping up with the Gabors. And I think the last Gabors has passed on. And, uh, <laughs> you know, th those are always the things seeing it every year. It's like, you know, you know, who's left us? Because, I mean, Norm MacDonald, yeah. Barbara Walters, Will yep. Smith. The, um, <laughs> no, wait. Um, okay. Thank you very much. That's a... Jeff Ross joke that I stole, but I, I always love that one. Well done, well done. Uh, <laughs> so, give credit. Um, but anyway, yeah, so we did the monologue. There's all those great vignettes with the Simpsons and, and the Wheel of Jeopardy and, and all that. Um, and then, gosh, what happened? No, it went. The Wheel went of Jeopardy. Right hold on, to... hold on. The Wheel of Jeopardy. We, the Wheel of Fortune. And, and did, Pat Sajak. Yeah. Pat Sajak. The thing I love about that is. The how many times did they ever use? You know, I love to use this phrase. Pat Sajak was a comedy speed bag that was used so many times in so many ways. And for Sajak yeah. to be part of the last show, I love that as well. Uh, those who are who are way too young to understand what we were talking about, Pat Sajak was originally going to be the savior of CBS to take on Johnny Carson in the Tonight Show. I can't even say it out loud without laughing. Pat Sajak was going to be the guy to take on Johnny Carson in the Tonight Show. And uh, and and they love to make, to poke fun at uh, at Pat. And uh, and that it was neat to see Pat kind of throw one back and, and Wheel of Fortune to throw one back at, at, at Dave and company that night. That was a really fun and moment. I never made that connection. I never made oh. that connection. You're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. There you go. That, that show and, and Chevy, remember Chevy Chase's show? Yeah, absolutely. Ooh. Absolutely. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> that was dead on arrival. But, um, but then, yeah, no, then he sits at his desk and the first thing he did, again, again, going back to Jay Leno not giving kudos to Johnny Carson was right away mentioned Stephen Colbert and, and typical Dave, you know, completely, I wish him the best and everything. And, uh, you know, the, you knew that that was on the list of like things Dave must do in this show, like before, you know, otherwise for better, you know, for yep. a good reason or not, it's going to be analyzed or something. So, yep. um, so I think, yeah, where'd it go from there? Went to the, went to the kids video, mm -hmm. um, which, which, which was great, which, um, you know, quoted so many lines from that one whether it's the whether it's the kid saying accidents happen or uh, <laughs> your your day-to-day -day pickle you know and just <laughs> anyway um or that girl says astrid she drives me nuts i said that around my kids they don't know what the heck i'm talking about um but uh but then yeah this is where so the, so that was the first thing before before the top 10 list so again yeah. you know i think it said you know when we come back alan culture here i'm saying when we come back, the top 10 list. And of course, what's going to happen? We know that there's celebrities in the building because we've heard Jim Carrey's in the house and we think we saw Jerry Seinfeld or something come in. So it goes to commercial. Dave gets up. So, you know, Paul's playing. And again, this is every time I go to the show and even before this one, you know, the band starts playing during commercial break. Everybody's looking at this awesome music. I'm listening to the awesome music. I'm looking over at Dave, you know, because he's talking to Absolutely. Bill Shepard or the, the, the other the producers. The scrum or always fascinated yeah, just, me. Just, scrum just was it, yeah. Him. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I know I'm like sitting there looking over there, wherever he's looking over here, because you want to see how the sausage is made in those moments that people don't don't see and everything. So yep. so Dave walked over and Alec Baldwin kind of pops his head out. So right away I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, this is this is going to be this is going to be this is going to be cool. 
Um, so we know that some, something's going on that looks is pretty sweet. So Dave goes back, come out of commercial break. They do the top 10 list, which was, you know, I, every time I watch, every time I watched the show and, and did it again, I watched it yesterday just to refresh my memory. Mm-hmm. Baldwin comes out, everybody cheers and stuff. Barbara Walters, who's an icon, comes out. She does her little thing. She didn't stand on her mark. And yeah, she's a little do I do. Can you see all of Baldwin's almost going up to like get her back on track? <laughs> but then it's Steve, Steve Martin comes out next. And even the audio, and I know for me, my just uh, my heart just went like and he goes, number eight, Steve Martin. And just the crowd just went. And and even Steve kind of acknowledges the crowd because they were just nothing against the other two. No. But like, oh my God, you know, we are seeing the and then Jerry Seinfeld, Jim Carrey, and and, and you know, you know it. Um, and then Julie Louis Dreyfus is you know, I didn't need I didn't need the director to cut to Jerry because as soon as she did her joke, I'm looking at Jerry and he played it just, you know, he knew what was going on, obviously. And perfect joke, perfect in, reaction, perfect moment. Jerry yeah, Foley yeah. nailed it. It was just oh, awesome. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. Jerry Foley, what a yeah, yeah. It's right. Fantastic. I'm trying. I'm trying. Is he on he's on like, sure. Sometimes I feel like we're this close, sometimes it feels like we're this close, but I'm trying real hard to get Jerry. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah, I know you're killing it, man. Um <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you get them. Yeah. Cause uh, the stories, yeah. Just being able to manage all those cats or herd of cats the way they do is just, you know, things happening. So, so yeah. And then Bill comes, Bill Murray comes out and you knew, you knew going out number one, it had to be Bill Murray. We know he's in town cause he was there last night anyway. So that was just awesome to see that. And, um, you know, can't, can't say enough about the top 10 list. So, you know, as soon as it goes to commercial, though, that was that. Can, was can I throw a couple cool. th- before you go to commercial? Please. Can I throw a couple things in? Well, okay, no, actually, no. You finish that because you're talking about the top ten still. You're talking about them. Out, uh, okay, keep talking about that, and then I'll, I'll I'll throw in a couple little things. So he says, you know, our friends at the Late Show, da da da, custom commercial. So they're all standing there, and yeah. so you know, they're all kind of talking to each other and stuff. A couple, I you know, a few things that totally just stick on my head. Jim Carrey goes over to Paul Schaefer and, and like, I think he might've like just shook his hand or gave him a hug or something. So, you know, total, you know, Canadians uh, unite. Uh, yep. Absolutely. Canadians unite there. Um, <laughs> and then they all kind of milled off and stuff, you know, and, and then Dave goes after it. But at one point, I just remember this Chris rock and the way that he just kind of, you know, he just plants himself on stage. You just see him kind of go. And he's looking around, taking it in, taking it in. And I, and he's sitting there going, this is it, you know, this is it. And I, I, I just zoned in on that man. And cause that's how everybody was feeling. And, you know, the time's clicking away. It's like the show's, it's going to be over, you know, this is ending. And there's Chris Rock standing on the stage, the way Ray Romano, the way Norman McDonald, all these people who, especially comed- stand up comics, you know, the way they got their spot and everything came from there. That was just, that was just so special to see that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jump in. Yeah. I can, uh, I can put myself back in the moment when I sat at the desk afterwards. And I mean, I've told my story so many times, but but when I was sitting at the desk, uh, I did take a moment to, to do that, to take everything in. And even though the theater was pretty much empty at that point and whatnot, I just, I took a moment to look around at all those things. And I can, I, and I, and I, you know, sometimes I will actually tell my brain to press record on the memory thing. Like I'll tell my brain to do that. And I did that in that, at that moment. And then when we stood up, like, Mike, the security guy that helped us do that, he's like, come on, get out of here. So I got up and I, and I went to the same spot. I went to the monologue spot and I did the same thing. Um, um, and and uh, it's funny, uh, a few months ago, my wife and I went back to New York and and, and um, some of our a buddy of mine who works for Colbert now, he's one of the he's one of the union guys. And so um, he brought us in there and I did the same thing. And it's it's so crazy, even though it has changed so much. There there's an energy to it and it feels the exact like it just it that magic just you still feel it and and i love that you saw that through chris because that's a beautiful um that's a beautiful moment it's a beautiful thing to 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 be grateful and present in that moment and 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 hit that record button i love that uh of the top 10 there's a couple moments that I loved so much. Number one, let's note this. Uh, there, there's a guy who was on the very last Larry Sanders show and a guy who was on the very last Late Show with David Letterman. That's Jim Carrey, uh, which I thought was very interesting because he was a guest on Larry Sanders' actual last show. Right. He was the guest that night. Um, and I just thought it was interesting that, that you know, if we can mention Gary Shandling, anytime we can do that, I do that. Well, the other thing, oh. too, was if you'll remember, Bill Murray the night before 
Yep. Um, that was cake night, right? And it was uh, <laughs> all true. we were seeing is more worldwide pants going outside and, you know, being crazy. And then he had gotten himself into, uh, I, I don't know if it was, it was, it was too much drinking. And then he appeared on an NBC show or whatever. Yeah. At the end of the top 10 list, <laughs> Dave walks over to Bill and whispers in his ear, Hey, saw you, you on okay? TV last night. Everything okay? And Bill's like, I'm fine. I'm <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Cause I've seen I that clip. That. It might have been the great Don Geller who posted. Yeah. He was on a TV show. And yep. he sat in a chair and you see him kind of wipe out and stuff. Yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, so lubricated or something. But yeah, I love that. I love seeing that. I, I mean, I love seeing, you know, Jim Carrey hugs him and says, I love you very much. Like Jim Carrey says it. And, and like, that's like, you know, he Absolutely. probably saw Norm and stuff saying these things. And it's like, guys don't say that to each other, you know? Yep. You're not supposed to do that. Yeah. You know, and I love especially I love, with I Dave. That, you know, <laughs> yeah, especially with Dave, who was you know, there was no truck for the like, truck for the sentiment or, or you know, um, yeah, that so that was lovely, and, and all those bits, and you know, the Peyton Manning, he, you know, going crazy over the sports figures, which again, you know, I'm more crazy over the comedians than the sports figures or yep. something. Unless it was, I, I went crazy was about like just like with Jay uh, Thomas and watching Dave's reaction when Dave went over to Peyton and said, Mr. Manning, like he, yeah. like seeing him excited that Peyton was good. there. I'm yeah. happy for Dave in that moment. Like so happy right. for Dave in that moment. So yeah. um, no. right on. Very, very, very cool. Okay. Yeah. So after the top 10, is that well, when we went is, to Dave in the life? No, not quite yet. This is, this is then the moment where I can, um, we had our special moment as an audience. Okay. So I, I've kind of like written this down so I can get it right. So yeah, it goes from the top 10, comes out of commercial and it's that clip from the morning show with the dog and the, and the, the guy says, oh yeah, do the square root of 25. And so he barks five times or he barks four times. Four times. <laughs> it's like, and like, what a great act, you know? And he goes, one more, one more. He goes, oh, and Dave's like, oh, what a good boy, what a good boy. So come back to Dave, right? And Dave's sitting there and, and then Dave says, this is what's on the air. Dave says, uh, you know, you, uh, you give the dog two shots, you think you get it right, right? And the audience went nuts. We went nuts because that was a redo, okay? Oh, which, which you know, you, you always hope for a perfect show, you know, or he does on the thing or any of the, the staff and stuff. But what had happened, he did it. He did a joke about the dog. And then he said, you know, I, I just can't express my appreciation for all the top 10 people and their time and their talent um and then and then the next thing and the next thing he says because then he's going to the taco bell bit right he goes and now this next bit uh, uh we filmed this june 17th 1976 our friends or a visit to taco bell and then you hear that that the atmosphere breaks something's wrong right and of course i'm sitting there going you didn't have a show in 76 right and you hear them go you know you know and then you hear like somebody go in 96 not 76 right and okay take it back take it back so it's the great just you know the tv production aspect coming in so that's why it's fantastic you know it comes back he redoes that and then the, the bit with the dog makes more sense he goes you know you give him two shots you think you get it right and which is fantastic because he's inside you know, just like that he's, that's not a writer that's dave just coming with his own ad lib yeah and then he has to he kind of did another peyton manning joke i wish i could remember the first one because the one you've seen on the air is the one about it you know, when you look at them, it's like we're twins. Right? We're twins, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it might have been we're looking in a mirror or something. It was something to the effect that he and him were very uh, similar. Uh, but then he goes into, in our next bet, you know, and here's a little video from June 17th, 1996. And he just leans into it. And if you hear it now, I'm like, <laughs> it's just even better. And then the crowd just cracks up even more because Dave's totally acknowledging, even though at home, he would have had no idea. If he just did our next bits from June 1996, Cool. Yeah. Go into the Taco Bell, um, but that's just that was one of those yay, you know, part of one of those screw ups that turned into something even better, something that was special. That uh, you yeah. know, um, and of course, yeah, one of the best remote bits ever, arguably. Uh, yeah. You know, you can't, you can't. Uh, <laughs> I think he's gone already, that. cheap. He's gone already, cheap. Yeah, I, I say that. I, that's in my, uh, that's in my Rolodex of phrases. No, no question. Yeah, she's gone already, chief. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so then it was, yeah. And then, then this is a great. So then it was a time. Um, then it was getting ready for day in the life, but now it's getting ready for Foo Fighters because now the top ten, you know, we don't need the stage anymore. So right. they're setting up the stage for Foo Fighters, 
And then this was again was a time for Paul and the band to shine because they did yeah. Central Park and West, which you hear coming out of the commercial and then going back. But they did the full thing because it took a long time to set up Foo Fighters set and everything. Um, so again, just those are the best. Those are the glorious moments to see like what a tight group, you know, and Paul, just a musical genius. Uh, yeah. and, and what a great reaction. Again, I'm listening to that mostly, but also looking over at Dave, who's talking to whoever and stuff. But I'd say that was, you know, probably upwards of 10 minutes or something. And uh, then the camera comes in, does the swooping overhead and, and then back. Um, yeah. Then it went, yeah, then it goes into the day in the life of Dave. Um, yeah, in that, gosh, I can't remember then if, if Foo Fighters came on. They probably came on after that. I don't, there was no reason for them to be on the stage then. So, yeah, I think they would have come out right after that, mm -hmm. in the next commercial break. Yeah, they but were they on stage when Dave gave his final remarks. They were on stage prepped already at that the point. The whole time. Yeah. Which you think, I always think about hockey players, you know, when they have celebrations before the game and they got to stay yep. warm and they're white. Dave and, and, and the guys, they were on stage the whole time when Dave said, you know, before we before we wrap this thing up, I've got a few things to say. Yeah, he's sitting there talking about Biff and the band and all the stage crew and, and Dave Kroll and company, they're there and they're just cracking up because like they're standing, you know, you know where they are in relation to- In Dave tuxes. Stuff. Yeah, in tuxes. I mean, how how beautiful is that? You know, we're, we're getting, we, we realize the gravity of this because, you know, Foo Fighters screams tuxedos, you know, when you hear, <laughs> the, you hear the music. Um, and so that, yeah, that was just awesome because I'm sitting there watching Dave, Grohl as much as Dave Letterman in terms of he yeah. just cracked all the guys and um oh Taylor Hawkins I mean you know there's, there's so many mm -hmm. things you, you you watch every year as you watch it's just like ah oh, anyway yep um and then uh yeah going through and again just that emotion in the building especially is now going talking about the you know the, the staff and the people in the the people who don't see the light of day they're you know they're hermits and stuff you know working day in and out <laughs> and of course Dave's deflecting everything to, you know, the writers much funnier than I'll ever be and everything. Um, and then of course, you know, that's when I realized his wife, <laughs> like, I don't think a lot of people, at least certainly because I was center, I was like fifth row back center. They were stage left. Uh, yeah. So I really had no reason to look at the audience then or anything, but you remember that it's like, he's, Absolutely. he's giving a act at least to everybody. And then he gets to his family and just, everybody just rises to their feet and, you know you know they didn't expect that because they had the whole picture of of harry smoking the cigarette and stuff um <laughs> like oh yeah at this point the crowd will leap to their feet in recognition of dave's yeah. wife and child and stuff but i mean what a <laughs> you know what a, what a moment that was it was just it was just lovely um but um yeah i remember that and uh you know then saying goodbye to paul and then yeah, so then he and then he goes into before he introduces the Foo Fighters. This this okay, so this is my Rupert Popkin moment here from uh King of Comedy or or mm. or Joker, right? So I, I I'll claim this absolutely is it was was meant to be. Is uh is, is then Dave does, you know, and I'd like to thank you, the viewer, you know, everything you've given me and all that. I think and I thank you again. Cuts to the crowd, and there I am, top oh. top corner. I know Jerry Foley. He he saw me there. He said, "Well, we've got to put <laughs> we've got to put Rob on. Got to get yeah." So that, we have this thing for putting right. Canadians on there. It's the deep, deep inside that's joke. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit more blurry than you were, I'm sure, in your moments. Uh, so, um, but yeah, and then it, and then it just you know the moment that we all remember. Thank you and good night. You know, and he goes, and I love how when you think about it in hindsight, he's like my my last time on television. And it was for all intents and purposes, because now he's on this Netflix thing. That's not TV. That's streaming, yep. whatever yep. streaming is. Yeah. Yeah. So and then it goes into Foo Fighters. So, and then and then you're torn because there's then three things. And I, you know, watching Foo Fighters, seeing this great band. Yeah. And again, watching the watching the monitors to see yep. what Barbara Gaines and company put together, which was masterful. And, and I love all the Scott Ryans, how they had to. She was up until the last second editing it and. The Farrah Fawcett, you know, moment was off, and they had to edit and all that yep. stuff. Yep. So I probably didn't watch the montage as you know, as and again watching Dave going, you know, this is this is it, this is it's, you know, it's it's winding down and stuff. So um, that finishes. I think it went right into the yeah, went right into the. Well, credits. hold on. He said he he, yeah. he said thank you and good night and 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 let's the Foo Fighters started playing. Um, Foo Fighters played a bit. Then yeah, they played a few chords. 
So at least we got to, as a viewer at home, you got to see them play. But then, you know, what? Yeah, what but lack what, of, what did uh, Dave do? Because I, I assume the third thing you were looking at was zeroed in at Dave. Did he yeah. watch the entire performance? Did he? Yeah. Okay. He was there. The he was. He watched the entire performance, and then it went into it went into the credits, which yeah. was what a you know lovely beautiful thing credits. So all the people, yeah, yeah. With not just names but pictures and stuff. So it was like excellent. And yeah, Dave was there because then at the end of that, you know, and then you saw Harry skiing that that clip there, or yep. you know, the Worldwide Pants logo comes on. Dave gets up and he come and then he grabs the mic again very quickly, just says. You know, I want to thank you all. Every you know, thank you and good night. This has meant uh, this has meant a great deal to me, or, or something to that effect. And that you know, he's gone into the gone into the ether, right? So yeah. he did give one last uh, one last you know um, words to the crowd there. So, which is know, unusual. So that, he doesn't that that's not that's not that's not a usual thing that he yeah. yeah yeah yeah. That's so special. He, that's special right there. Yeah, and just how he said that it meant it, and you know. Who knows what's going through his head because he's so transparent with how he feels and stuff. Though more so obviously in the last few years, which which that evolution of him is just oh, so. Totally. So I think you're this. I well, I've heard your podcast, so I know you're the same. You're a fan of like T Dave, our TV friend, who just sits down and tells a story. Like those, as much as I love the zaniness of late night again, late show is where I just I just the guy is just magnetic to to listen to and what a a storyteller and, and especially on the spot like <laughs> he when certain uh, personal issues are happening, like just being able to address it. So, um, yeah. so then, yeah, so then it's the end and everybody gets up and you know, it's like, it's, it's cause it's a show. It's a business. Like get the heck out now. You're, you're done. Everybody get yeah. out. But this, this, <laughs> you know, this was different here. Cause then all these, all the staff were coming up on stage. They're, they're hugging, they're, they're taking selfies with each other. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm pulling out my camera. Then I'm I'm taking shots because what are they going to do now? <laughs> like, yeah, you know, exactly. You know? Yeah. Um, so it's like, uh, and you hear the people yelling, "No photos, no photos," which which cracks me up now. And 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 gosh, in hindsight, man, knowing what happened to the set, like a day or two later, just you know, which is so. I should have brought a screwdriver. I should have been like taking my seat apart during the show. I would so have I rented a U-Haul, man. I would have rented a U-Haul. I had it yeah. out there into the dumpster, back into the U-Haul, into the dumpster, back into the U-Haul. That's it's, oh. yeah, it's it's really. And I don't know if you probably had this conversation with with some of the others. Like, where was Worldwide Pants in this? In terms of you know, a lot of this is should have been preserved or something. You know, in terms of the the scenery or you know, wasn't a thought of the Smithsonian's going to come knocking for the guy who's king of late night and all that. But anywho, another. Another story. We all start filing out. I remember, uh, you know, Dave's wife and child are still there, and I always thought it was weird. This this sticks in my memory. Just some random audience guys like going up to Harry, asking to shake his hand and stuff. And as a father, I'm kind of like, dude, the guy's ten years old. He has no I know, idea. That's, you are. Yeah, that's <laughs> kind of weird. But uh, I digress. Um, but that was fun too because then um, Anton, I, I'm looking at the band, and you know, Paul kind of went off, and and you probably seen the video. Yep. Anton pulls out his cell phone and he's just, you know, he's saying, he's saying hi to the horns and, and all this stuff. And then he sweeps the crowd. So I just wave, I go, bye, Anton. And you can see me like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, there's my other Rupert Pumpkin moment right there. Um, and, but again, you know, just seeing the emotions, because again, as much as, as a viewer, we're like, this is the last letter. It is the last day of work for so many people. Yep. And decades you know working with the same people and um yeah i mean you really you felt that you felt that atmosphere and uh you know then every mills out into onto broadway there's all these reporters there and, you, and they're asking people right away okay what were the things they said yeah what happened what happened yeah yeah what happened what happened so um you know my wife and i we we had bought tickets for a show at eight o'clock and because it went long we just had time to go eat dinner and stuff um went to the musical then what'd you go you know, see do you know, remember yeah oh absolutely oh, I, uh something rotten which is a great like uh new musical about shakespeare and so very funny um right. and then from there again we didn't have a we didn't have a hotel we had left our bags at the hotel but we didn't have a room that night but then we had got tickets for the comedy cellar uh you know way down lower manhattan yeah because wow. i've never been there before and i'm like oh. you know we have to kill time so yeah. that's like an 11 11 30 start um Here's a fun fact too, because I kept thinking, oh, maybe somebody's going to show up there. Maybe Chris Rock, he's in town. Totally, I'll, I'll do, do a walk on. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
but this is crazy. I, this is something that I remember. It's like John Mulaney was walking around. He was walking around Times Square around the time, I think, after the late late show finished. I'm like, hey, that's John Mulaney. And then and then later he was outside at the Comedy Cellar. So John Mulaney was in two places uh, during uh, May 20th. Anywho. Uh, but went to the went to the comedy cell and of course yeah when you get a chance you got to go just I mean, absolutely the caliber of comedians there and, and uh, it's like the comedy store in la or something yep. um i'm trying the only person that i knew going in was david tell he oh. he popped in I know oh he had, like, you this, saw tell oh you know, that's saw fantastic comes on with his like backpack it looks like he just showed up like yeah i think i'll do a set you know he just walks on and stuff <laughs> so that that was that was brilliant now it's like 2 a.m so time to head back to our hotel in Queens. So we get on like the slowest subway or at that time of night, it's going to be slow. Get to the hotel. My wife's like, okay, I'm done with the subways. We're taking a taxi to LaGuardia <laughs> Airport. So, okay, okay. So so again, <laughs> three, four days away and we only spent one night sleeping and then get to the airport. By that time, all the newspapers have, uh, yeah, all the newspapers are printed. So it's like yeah, holding up the New York Post. I just picked up everything because Dave's on the cover of- uh, Yep. You know, all these newspapers and stuff. So, um, yeah, and then flew back Toronto, back to Vancouver, and the the adventure was over. So, yeah. can we uh, can we go through some photos right now? Oh, sure. Okay. Come on. Come on. There we go. Okay. I, I don't know if Jay. they're in the right order or not, but can you see that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Jay with Christine. So there's there's my wife. Uh, just riffing, trying to see what Dave means to her. <laughs> you know? Well done. Yeah, you're you're like I am. You're uh you're fighting above your weight class. You're a closer. Well done, hey, man. Indeed. There you go. Yeah, she's yeah. pretty foxy. I'm not surprised Jay went to her instead of me. So <laughs> I, I completely understand. Even though you would have called him Eddie Lebeck, what the heck just happened there? Okay, hold on. I don't know why. It just... Oh, okay, hold on. Let's go back. There we go. Yeah. So that's the one. You know, whipping out the camera at the end is really. And look at all the thank you and good night jackets. Oh yeah. Oh, that's right. That's the ones they all were gifted, right? At the end or something or. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I don't, I don't have mine here right now, but if I did, I'd show it to you, but that's what, uh, that's the thank you and good night jacket. And, 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 uh, I love, I love mine. Um, sure. yeah. If you, if you ask me what I'd rather have my pinky finger or my thank you, good night jacket, I would say my pinky finger, but I would think about it for a second anyway. But um, what do you need a pinky finger for? That's not like the Dr. Evil move, but that's, that's it. true. <laughs> and i've got another one yeah good you call. got another one yeah what's your deal yeah so that's great that's that yeah holding the usa today kind of like the you know the prison shot or yeah we're definitely this is the day it happened kind of thing so yeah and, and no the surprise, line up under the marquee going down broadway yeah and that's yeah i think that's, that's pandemonium that's what that is yeah exactly that was at the end and they were just streaming out and still reporters asking what what happened and everything so and there's that USA Today. Oh, yeah. Top 10 reasons David Letterman's on the front page today. I always love when periodicals would do a top 10 list because right. um, they were always so bad. Like, like yeah, I mean, that's true. Not, not quite the same caliber. Yeah. <laughs> there's the, how much do you, like just this marquee alone, how much do you miss this? You know, and, and, and you know, because I've, I've since gone back, you know, my stretch of going to Dave was when I always say when I was single and had money and time before I got married and, and had kids and stuff. So that's yep. where I did a lot of my, I think it was like five years straight that I got to see Dave once a year and stuff. So yeah, it was weird the first time I went back and saw Colbert's thing, but I always, and I don't know if you've asked this question with like, you know, the Ed Sullivan theater, it's like, yep. shouldn't it be the Ed Sullivan or the Sullivan Letterman theater? But well, uh, you know what we have, we have talked about that a little bit. And uh, the fact that it's, um, it's a landmark. Oh, right. And, Tough and, to and so, it. you know, yeah, I mean, I would love it to be called the Ed Sullivan, David Letterman theater, but uh, um, the, it, it's got a lot of storied history to it. And I, at the end of the day, I don't think Dave would even There's... ever entertain That's the right. option of that. Uh, you know, the reverence that he has for broadcasters of the past, Sullivan right. being one of them. So, um, but you think, you know, if Colbert sticks around, it'd be like Sullivan, Sullivan, <laughs> Sullivan Letterman, Colbert, Hamlet, yeah. or something. It'd be like a law firm, law firm after a while. But uh, yeah, the that, fact yeah, that, that the, the fact that Dave performed in the Ed Sullivan Theater, I think, is the history in as far as they're concerned. But that's uh, right. but I, I, I hear you. I totally hear you. So look at this being uh, 
being interviewed. That's the, yeah, NBC, NBC Nightly News guy. I just remember that because uh, I'm like, where is this? So he was just saying what what moments in Dave, you know, appeal to you and all that. So it was fun to fun to try to do some good sound bites there. Yeah, not my picture, of course. That's no. the, one of the, the gang. Iconic uh, top 10. Uh, just oh, I just, I look at that. And, you know, and you look at this, it's like, again, every year, and this is our first year, Barbara Walters having passed yep. away. Yeah, it's kind of, you know, that's the first of the top 10 list for me that, you know, I look at Chris Rock and I one of the days I saw was Will Smith. Um, he was a yeah. guest on one of my Letterman. So as soon as the slap happened, there's me going, hey, I saw those guys on Letterman yeah. uh, in, in the flesh. But yeah, God, that was what at that moment was just amazing. There's Jay yeah, there's, doing his thing, doing his thing. Yeah. So did you see him from afar? Like, okay, so you said he turned around yeah. and you noticed it was him. It was a surprise as opposed to. Well, he was across. Yeah, he was across the street first. I think I've, I don't think I sent you that picture. And I'm like, oh, there's Jay Thomas. I think he was across Broadway on the other side, looking yeah. back at the marquee. Maybe he was doing his intro. Then he came over to to the crowd and then uh, worked his way down the line and stopped on uh, and me and Christine. There she is. There she is with him. Yeah. What, a, what a happy little bonus that was for you. Uh, yeah, especially with him passing away. I mean, God, the best, the Christmas episode is, is up there with like the last episode. I just watch that every year, especially now. And uh, absolutely. You know, uh, this picture here, we have to note once again, remember, Rob urinated and did not wash his hands. So <laughs> as he took this picture. So, you know, hopefully the phone to do, my man. Oh, gosh. Can you imagine that? I mean, to have missed it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. No photo, no photography, no for yep. the theater. Yeah. Don't, don't uh, drink a big Gatorade before just because you're saving a couple bucks. <laughs> so there's the ticket. Yeah. Got to take a picture because it's confiscated. And there's the number. I, I wish I could have kept it. mine. I have my ticket still. Yeah. Um, I think I do have mine, but just in the frantic getting ready for this, I just couldn't, I couldn't find it. So. Yeah, I wish I could have kept the stub though, because that's the thing that said that I was on Kevin's gold list and I wanted to keep that part, but they tore it off. Ah, uh, you're on the gold list too. So how did you get on the gold list? Was that just your enthusiasm checking? Yeah, in so I've 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 uh, I've told the story before, and I'll, I'll probably do another version of the letter manifesto. This is a beautiful picture. I love that. Uh, yeah. The two of you with with Dave there, and here's your here's the the shows that you got a chance to see. Right. Um, you know, crazy when you look at that. Goo Goo Dolls, it's fantastic. Um, you know, Will Smith, Derek Jeter, <laughs> Derek Jeter at the same time. Bjork, yeah. I love Bjork. I've seen her uh, in Vancouver and Seattle. Um, I just love her. Um, and then, of course, we're not uh, Bill Clinton. I mean, my goodness. Well, that, I mean, if there's time for that, I mean, I can quickly kind of dive into that or something. But yeah, so that, yeah, so that's September 11, 2002. Yeah. So yeah, the year I'm looking at my list here. Yeah, the year before was the David Schwimmer and Bjork. So that was my family and I. We had gone to New York. Um, my brother and I saw Letterman. So that was number four for me. We were then flying to England for my cousin Kate's wedding. We flew back on September 10th. Um, well, no, I'll jump in there. The day after, the day after Letterman, I saw Regis and Kelly. Yeah. Um, and 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 they do a thing where like it's a travel trivia and, and they get somebody on the phone they answer a question and if they get it right or wrong they win the big prize but regardless of the end they say oh, now you and a lucky audience member will win a gift certificate to omaha steak so pick a number between <laughs> this and this and they picked my number and so that's that's my again new york has just had amazing stuff in new york so there's me on regis and i'm just my buddy chris is killing himself laughing uh and so i won my omaha steak so i had like a big envelope from regis go to england come back we're flying back to new york because it was like round trip air india new york to london and back and then uh flying back to vancouver or seattle rather um but my bags didn't show up and i'm there with my brothers and and my, my, my brother my brother and my sister i said hey guys i don't want to i don't want to leave my bag i don't you know because i was saying more i've got my certificates and all that anywho we ended up having to drive. I think we were at JFK Airport. We got rebooked on another flight. It was true. It was, my bag was not going to show up. So we wanted to get back right. anyway. We ended up right. driving through Manhattan past. It was a pissy, rainy night. That's the thing. You always see September 11. It was a beautiful day. September 10, it was pouring rain. Driving by, I remember seeing the skyline of, of the towers and everything. Getting to Newark Airport, where our rebooked flight was. And then, you know, talking to the gate agent saying, wow, what a day for you. You must be so with all these flight delays. Oh, yeah. What a what a pain. Not knowing, of course, within 
24 hours, the whole world would change and certainly travel yeah. and all that. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So we ended up getting home, get, get back uh, to our place. The phone rings the next morning, September 11th. It's my girlfriend's uh, uh, mom calling saying, where's Rob's mom? Because my mom was, uh, she spent an extra night in New York. She was going to fly home from LaGuardia on September 11th. Mm. And yeah, so she's like, where's Rob? Where's Rob's mom? Where's Rob's mom? Why, why, why? I turn on the TV and then we turn on CNN. Yeah. And, you know, thankfully we found out my mom was at LaGuardia Airport. She's just checking in and then the airport's evacuated. Um, she ends up, she had been chatting with some stranger from like Arkansas or some, something and just said, well, I'm going back to my son who lives in Manhattan or in Queens or something. And my mom just said, do you mind if I go with you? So my mom ends up staying with a stranger uh complete stranger she had met her five minutes before just for a few nights before she could get to montreal fly back anyway so that's our that's our 9-11 story but wow again then coming up to the first year anniversary i thought i i just i felt like you know i coming back to, to new york then and stuff so that yeah i was fortunate to get tickets for uh for dave's one year anniversary and it was it was checking in that was unlike any other times they said you cannot have anything with you you can't have a camera you can't have an umbrella nothing besides you know and obviously it was secret service agents and he wasn't the sitting standing president then or sitting no. at one point he was sitting <laughs> um but that was that was cool to just be in that and and that was a really solemn one but dave was joking a lot more it wasn't like the one the first show after 9 11 but no. uh, yeah which is just that's still a masterful job in many respects of just what he did but um yeah so that, that was a that was pretty special Couple, yeah, a couple of years later, 2005, I saw Lance Armstrong right after he won his like fifth or whatever. Was it fifth or seventh Tour de France? So yep. that might have been Eddie Brill saying, you guys are in treat. We're seeing a real sports hero. <laughs> you know, and of course, he turned out to be such a, uh, you know, anyway. Well, the situation uh, that happened there. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, historical moments. I mean, uh, 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 the thing about Dave and company and and. The resilience of him as a broadcaster, and again, I go over this, you know, the idea of the broadcaster versus the entertainer versus the comedian, broadcaster first, and that puts him into a category. You mentioned Barbara Walters earlier and some of these other people. Uh, I always say that Dave's my Walter Cronkite, um, and, and, and uh, you know, these moments, these world event moments – no offense to Mr. Leno, but we don't necessarily think of Jay Leno. Where were you? What did Jay have to say during this time? Right. Um, you know, John Stewart's a little bit more there, but but again, when you look at the icon that is David Letterman as a broadcaster, um, many of us who who would consider us ourselves enthusiasts of him put that lens over. We put it over the broadcaster part of it, the world history part of it, and he's not just an entertainer. Yes. You know, his show, uh, in my opinion, like, again, I call him my Walter, Walter Cronkite because I'm a Gen Xer and Gen Xers are different than the baby boomers. You know, our idea of show business, our idea of, you know, uh, of a little bit of cynicism and sarcasm and, and, and uh, rebelliousness and, 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 uh, you know, the, the Nirvana, go ahead, entertain, you know, come on, entertain yeah. us, you know, and, and Dave is that guy for me and uh, clearly for us and for a generation of people. Um, and and putting the idea of world events through the Dave lens is something that that many of us do. Uh, you've had a chance to do that in a, in in a much more personal way, not just on TV, but you've actually seen some of these historical moments uh, in person. And that is, uh, I mean, talk a little bit about how grateful you are as a David Letterman fan for some of the things you've got a chance to see because I can hear it, I can feel it. Like yeah. I, I, I know we're doing an energy exchange here. That that is. It's real. Like I can tell how grateful you are. Eight years later, we're sitting here talking about it like it was yesterday. Yeah. No, I, I you know, and I and, and you probably I'm sure you've discussed this in the same wavelength, but you know, he left a year before 2016. And yeah. along with John Stewart, you always wonder what if, because <laughs> yeah. you know, not to get into a political thing, and you and I are two Canucks anyway, so um yeah. it's our place to comment on that or or what what have you, but Trump coming on David Letterman, he didn't get away with anything. No. And I don't, when was the last time he came on the show? Like he hadn't announced his candidacy yet, but no. you know, Dave would have not been ruffling his hair or doing all that stuff. Right. And of course, John Stewart would have raked him over the coals too. So you go that, what if, you know, and Dave, if, if the late show was on and the pandemic hit, I mean, here we are yeah, eight years later living through a pandemic. Would he have done a remote show? Like, did he have the energy to, 
to do that it's like and every year that goes by every may 20th and you know get a tasty beverage sit down and and just watch it's just a flood of emotions just coming back and reflecting and again as we're getting older and you yeah. know uh it's just a natural thing and dave's you know we've, we've seen dave do that he was this guy who rightly or not was criticized for making fun or maybe being harsh on guests or especially if they were plugging something you had no interest in it and by the end of the show i mean especially those last weeks are just the amount of love that was being thrown his way, I, I, you know, I can't, I, I can watch the Norm Macdonald, I can watch the Ray Romano and Martin Short, you know, great, may, yeah. maybe my pick for greatest uh, talk show guest or something, or the other guy, you know, the ones who prepared, Steve Martin would prepare, like, you know, and you hear these stories of he would get ready to go on date because it was, it wasn't just to sit down and chat, it, you yeah. know, these, these Charles Grodin, you know, master, oh. uh, <laughs> I know. Amy Sedaris, it was almost like the flip side. Like, how much was she riffing or something? But she was, she was something else. I mean, oh man, I would love to have Amy on this show. Uh, we we just got our ver- badge of honor. Just got our very first official rejection from Martin Short. Uh, hey, timing's timing's not right. So, congrats on that. Hopefully, we can uh, <laughs> figure out the timing when the timing is right for him. But Amy, like you've just mentioned, a, a group of people. Uh, another one, and we'll we'll do a shout out to the family. Uh, is is another guy who would do that is Bruce Willis. You know, Bruce Willis when. Whenever he would Bruce come on Willis. same same thing like 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 uh mr martin and and some of these other people uh we just talked to robert morton actually i think this episode is going to be in between part one and two of morty he was talking about andy kaufman andy kaufman back in the day would come on the show and how he would be in morty's office not coming on the show for another week or two but trying to figure out the best thing that he could do to be on the show but wow. yet when he comes out there making it look so effort, effortless and spontaneous and whatnot you 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 talk about that with amy um, yeah, I, I love that too. I love the chemistry that Dave has with some of these thoughtful people that aren't just plugging something. I think that's why my next guest is so powerful, watching him connect wow. with Billie Eilish walk, and, and her brother, watching them connect. Us, like there's could, a real connection or something. Yeah, and, yeah. and yet his curiosity um and 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 his expertise, uh, never mind the 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 you know the 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 whip smart wit that he has. Uh, Mm -hmm. you know, continues, in my opinion, to make him as compelling as he's ever been. He's just doing the Tom Snyder thing now, as opposed to the Johnny Carson thing. And, and I, I, I love that too. Um, Rob, I appreciate, uh, you being patient because I know, I, I knew I wanted to have you on the show. I knew I wanted to talk about the last show because you have such a cool, uh, vantage point from it. Thank you very, very, very much for being on here today. Before we kind of close it off, was there anything else you wanted to jump into today on your first appearance here on the Letterman Podcast? Just super grateful for the chance, Mike. As I say, having these memories and stuff, and now it's kind of at least solidified somewhere. So as I get old and I start to, you know, think that I was a guest on Letterman because my mind is kind of crazy. <laughs> at least I'll at least, at least memorize. I tell my kids about these tales, and they're kind of interested, but. Uh, no, thank you so much. This this means a great deal to me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, you're you're a brother from another mother, and you live just three hours down the road. I uh, I can't thank you enough for this. Uh, oh, hey, no, before we got we got one sponsor, and they're still the sponsor. He hasn't sold it yet. So until he sells the deli, and we got to figure something else out. Um, the Letterman Podcast has one sponsor, one sponsor only. That is Rupert G and the Hello Deli. If you want. Late Show with David Letterman merchandise. You can still get it. Officially licensed Letterman, uh, Late Show with David Letterman merchandise. Go to hello-deli.com. Get yourself a mug. Get yourself a shirt. Get yourself a cap. Um, He's got the deli up for sale. He's put it out there, everybody. So I'm not sure what's going to happen with all of that stuff once uh, that is finished. But we just love Rupert. Good, good, good friend, uh, personal friend, friend of our show. Uh, go to hello Uh, you didn't go, you didn't go to the hello deli the last time. You know what? We went, that is funny. Uh, when our boy's teacher found out we were going, we were like the day before, like, oh, man, Robin Christina going. He like runs out, gives her money, so you got to buy me a late show t shirt. So, technically, did go on the Tuesday before, went to get our t shirt for, for Mr. Eckert um yeah <laughs> i'd seen yeah i went to rupert's years ago i think i had the paul Schaefer there but i never got a picture with him i don't know why rupert always was so like so you know you didn't want to bug the guy because yeah. you know he's getting bugged a million times but just what a what a sweet gentleman and stuff so i know i'm, I'm hoping to go back to new york this year and gosh i hope he's still around and uh we'll definitely try to get that picture so 
Well, get that picture if you can. If not, we'll get them on the Zoom here together privately, and we'll get a, you'll get you a picture with them that way. <laughs> we'll do it that way. <laughs> um, Rob, I appreciate the heck out of you. Thank you so much for 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 doing this today. Um, that's how fast they go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I I just love the community of that we are building here with the Letterman podcast. So grateful for everybody who shares the enthusiasm and has actually taken the step to reach out, and a lot of you have. Uh, everybody who has a story, uh, I can't wait to somehow, some way to get to all of you, all of you, if we, if we can, uh, lots of good stuff coming up here on the Letterman podcast. Um, uh, yeah, you know what? I'm not even going to start. I'm not even going to start, uh, uh, trying to promote future episodes. Cause we've just got lots of really, really good stuff happening here. Uh, we will say this though. We're thinking about at the time of this recording, the writers are still on strike. So what we're going to do is say, support it, support your comedy writer, support your television writer, your script writer, the support, the writer in your life. Um, you know, the idea that factory workers have been downsized is something that has been in our in our in our lexicon for a long time as uh, machines have come in and helped things uh, along in the automation building process uh, the idea now that writers of all people creatives uh, could be replaced by computers and things like that. This writer strike that's happening right now, there's a lot of very creative people um, who who need support. And I believe that uh, it's up to us to support them. So I think about all the people. Uh, you can follow Bill Shaft or Steve Young, uh, Craig Thomas, um, and and many, many, many other writers. We're Dave Rogalski and uh, many, many other writers. I'm not getting to nearly all of them. Um, but uh, you can follow them on their social medias and see how the writer strike is going. We just want to lend our support to them as well. Um, that has been another episode of the Letterman Podcast with Mike Chisholm. Coincidentally, I am Mike Chisholm. Thank you and good night. Overcoat and underpants. <laughs>